Hi guys and welcome to another episode of JDM Masters Car Reviews and today we have a Honda Torneo, not an Accord, CL1 Euro R and we're going to be taking a look at this car in further detail so come and join us. So you can see that this is a classic three box design. You have the very clear distinctive bonnet, the center cabin and the trunk accentuated by rather angular lines coming from the rear windscreen to the front. The waistline is low and so is the overall height of the car. Now compared to the next generation CL7 model, which you can see here in our previous video that we reviewed, the later model takes a more rounded approach with a higher waistline. So there's some fans who still love these very classic sedan designs. And the bonnet line is very low sloping towards the front and it sort of gradually builds up towards the rear and the boot line is much higher. Now overall, the CL1 Accord, which is based on the CF4 SIR Accord, which is the two liter, we'll go into that a little bit more. It's a little bit longer than the next generation model. So this is the last of the Honda Accords from the 1990s. Now, a little bit interesting thing about this generation Accord, there were actually three different world models. This is the JDM version. Let's look at the Honda Accord. Well, it's the same car at the actual base model. This is the regular SIR or the SIRT called the CF4. And this is the base model of the Euro R CL1. Now, the difference is the width. The CF4 was a five number car, which we've explained in previous videos. In Japan, there is a category for the length and the width and the engine capacity of the size. Now, mostly it's limited by width at 1,700 millimeters. If it exceeds that, even by a little bit, it will take a three number. And the CL1, the Honda made it to give it a little wider track and increase the wheels gave it a little fender extension over here and in the rear just by about 30 to 40 millimeters making this base five number car into a three number car so this is the JDM version which is meant to be a narrow body as you can see here the European version as you can see in reference photos the Accord Type R or CH1 was slightly longer and also wider than this but the interior was basically kept the same for the u.s market for those american fans you can confirm and, and check this the 1990s a Corman was a much bigger car everything was basically different from the interior design to the engine choices and also the interior design so this is when honda wanted to try and experiment with three different models in three different world markets most of the world has never encountered or probably known about the cf and the cl accord torneo was a slightly different version as we explained earlier but it's basically the same car so what is this car based on well actually it comes from two different cars in 1997 after the release of the international model dc2 especially for the european market honda tried with the ch1 generation an accord type r as a more mature sporty version but they called this a type r which followed on the success and the marketing of the DC2 round headlights. But when that car was decided to be released in Japan, of course, with a different body, they changed the name. Now, why is that? So let's have a look at the base model, Accord and Tonio. So this is the Accord, SIR, and the base models of the other different models catalog. And you can see here, has a lot of different technologies, uh, variable gear ratio, electronic power steering, uh, discharge headlights, uh, new line of VTEC engines, and the Accord was a very popular choice because it was a narrow body but a long in width, which was very common with even its other competitors like the Camry and uh, the Legacy. And this is something that was very suitable for the Japanese market because there was a tax rebate on five number cars which the civic and other cars fell into that category now let's have a look here this is the blue top engine which is called the f20b a two liter version of the h22a so it's a bit confusing here now bear with me 
Here is the Accord's front mask, the shape of the lower part, angle of the vents right here and also the fog lights and take note of the overall shape of the headlights now compare it to the tornado it's not that much different but we feel that because it lacks the aggressive narrow grille of the accord the tornado with its slightly taller headlights and a more gentle angle this way with the lower bumper also having the fog lights integrated into the bumper. Actually, it's not too different if you look at it very carefully. It kind of gives it a little bit more subtle, uh, more mature look. It's less noticeable, less aggressive than the CL1 Accord. In the rear, it's a bit different. Now in the rear, the only difference are the tail lights itself. The overall bonnet shape is different. You can see from the Tornio has a small orthodox kind of two layer light designed clear and the red with the integrated. Now different from the Accord, the Euro R was introduced at the facelift or the Koki model, which made the lights a little longer. The SIRT was based on the Zenki model, which had a more inset lights, as you can see from reference photos here. So not much difference in that at all. Everything else is basically the same. Why is this car called an Euro R? in Japan. Now there's a little bit of an interesting story here. While the base model is from the CF4 SIR which is a 2 litre, the concept of the R, as you can see it's actually a different shape from the DC2 and the EK9 generation. It's a little bit more round, a little bit more less racy as if to signify that it's more refined or a bit more relaxed. But is it? Let's have a look at the 1998 European spec Accord which Honda wanted to use as a marketing move after the introduction of the European and world market DC2 Integra Type R. Now based on the slightly larger model of the European Accord, they decided to give this the Type R badge. You can see the red emblem used in both the Honda logo and also the R. And the rear is of a completely different design. Looks like the wing has been taken off a DC2. And the interior here is basically the same dash layout as the Japanese model with the H22 red top engine being taken from the Prelude BB6 and released also worldwide. But this is a completely different car in concept. When it was tested by journalists back then and even by Best Motoring's Gansan, they noticed that it was quite more sedate, much more refined, at the NVH levels and much more comfortable. It was more like a sport touring, comparable maybe to a BMW M3. So therefore, it wasn't as hardcore, as racy as the Type R, which is something that the Japanese customers would probably not accept if the Accord or the Tonio was called a Type R. Now taking from that formula and to refine it with more road handling that's suitable for long distance drives, which was very common with the suspension settings of European cars. Therefore, the Euro moniker comes directly from that. It's a more refined version, and they changed the R design. And driving this, it's meant to be more of a sporty, further feel of Honda's DNA. Oh, the H22A engine feels very different from other VTEC engines of that era, for example, the B16A, B, and the B18C, or even the F20C, which this engine in F20B form was the basis of that same large block for two liter class. And I'm just driving this model 20 years after its inception uh, from the old school on the DOHC VTEC. Uh, it's quite a joy to experience that old you know, torqueful push and effortless response from the large 2.2 liter four cylinder that Honda is very well known for. Uh, this car's equipped with a Mugen exhaust, which gives it that low bassy, sort of like soulful sound, like a good sound system uh, coming up from your exhaust. and. Actually, at lower revs, it does sound a lot like the S2000 in some ways, unsurprisingly. Uh, but, you know, the Euro R was not called the Type R in Japan for a very good reason. And the first thing is you can probably hear on the speakers, and 
is compared to the Integra Type R or the Civic Type R EK9 DC2, it's much quieter driving in this car because it's not really a Type R. The Type R means it's stripped out of all of its soundproofing. It's very spartan. It feels like a race car and it's noisy inside. You can hear noises from the road, of your braking and the engine and that, that gives it that sort of physical feel of just experiencing its mechanical efficiency. But in the Euro R, as the name implies, it's taken a more comfort, sporty approach and all that soundproofing has been kept inside and makes the car a little bit heavier than the auto type bars would be. And so basically, you're getting this feel that you're in a more luxury sort of sporty saloon rather than something that's meant to hit hard on a track and give you that kind of feel. I mean, nevertheless, it's, enjoy it's an enjoyable ride and you've got that sort of sporty response feel from that VTEC engine. Now let's talk a little bit about the interior. The driving position is not much different from the standard SIR model. Unlike the DC2 and the EK9, which they've lowered the seat position with the Recaro seats to give you that more sporty, low-slung feel. In the Euro R, you still got that same high position visibility looking out the front windscreen and to the side. Uh, the gear position feels a little bit lower, but it's nicely suited for the character of this touring kind of everyday family sedan sports because you can see how Honda has probably designed and had in mind that even though the, this car was meant to be sporty it still had to retain the civilized usability of a family car no more steering wheel and it feels very nice to grip it's not too thin it's not too thick much thinner than the later models like in the CL7 and compared to today's cars and combined with the EPS electronic power steering. In fact, there's a little switch here, minus, normal, and plus, and this adjusts the feedback or the assistance from the electric motors. Putting it on minus gives it a little bit more weight and feel, but it really lacks that direct communication that only a hydraulic power steering can provide. This is also from the base Accord SIR, which was the technology that Honda introduced uh, back in 97 for the base model. But driving it through town and parking and even on the highway, uh, it's not really that bad. I mean, this is the early iteration of electric power steerings and it's not too over assisted even on the highest setting. What's under the bonnet? Oh, this is a huge engine. Well, the bonnet is not aluminium. Honda typically doesn't use exotic, expensive materials for their bonnets or the fenders, uh, except the NSX Type R, which was carbon fiber. Perhaps a safe cost, but it also helps to give the balance to the car. Of course, many people do change to aftermarket carbon fiber bonnets, which makes it a little lighter, but it means that you don't have to worry about it being in a crash and expensive repairs. H22 engine, which is actually derived from the last generation Prelude over here. It's called the BB6. And when it was released in 1996 as the Type S, which had this wonderful ATTS torque transfer mechanism. Uh, let's not talk about that right now. What we're interested in here is the H22 engine with the red top. Now I explained in our previous video, in the FD2 that the red top engine is something that's within the Honda family, the highest of the spec of the H22. Now H22 already existed in the BB4 previous uh, Prelude, but for the BB6, they decided to go even further and refining things like the piston, for example, and more importantly here, the port and polish. Well, you can see here from the diagram that uh, they've done the valve cutting angle and also the intake port smoothing it out very much like the DC2 B18C engine. So using those techniques from the DC2 B18C and applying it to the H22 engine, giving it the highest performance of this, this engine. Now, of course, the H block is a little bit heavier. In fact, significantly heavier than the B blocks, making it the base for a two liter and above. In fact, in the H engine, they had 
2.3 liters as the as the highest and two liters as the minimum. But it's a little bit confusing here, now bear with me. So while the H22 engine is from the Pollute Type S, it's also the same family as the F engines. Now, with 2.2 liters giving 220 horsepower with the valve porting, but a lot of torque coming down low end, which has got a completely different character from the highly responsive and Revy B series engines. So let's have a look at how also the engine is slightly tilt backwards much like the Toyota Celica's 3S on the front wheel drives and you have a lot of space here for the exhaust manifolds. This particular car has the Mugen exhaust manifolds. As you can see here, it's a 4-2 to 1 design. A little bit rusty, but you can see here very clearly it says Mugen right here. And you can see the engine block itself is huge. And the cars, the Hondas of this generation had a huge distributor located on the left side and of course now the engine is in the same orientation as the b engines most hondas of that era gearbox sits on the left and the engine sits on the right you have the distributor on the front side versus the rear side uh, compared to the b engine so over here you can see the spool valve which is the important mechanism that activates the vtec switching what's different from the prelude there's the gear ratios and also some refinement in, in the cam and also the ECU settings, making this a little bit more responsive as it is a later generation. But otherwise, compared to the European Accord, it had a little bit more horsepower and therefore being the highest spec uh, of, of that generation of Accord. Double wishbone suspension in front, as you can see here, a very beefy uh, strut bar that goes also into the firewall like a triangle, something quite interesting from the factory already. Other than that, it's plain Honda, typical of that, era, of that era. It's a lot of space, actually. Most interestingly is the engine mount on this side makes it uh, cut down on the vibrations, a little bit different from the uh, Civics and the, uh, and the Integras. To check if your Accord is the genuine Euro R, very typical of 90s Hondas, it always lists here at the bottom the type, and it says Euro R. If it's a Type R, it would say Type R, SIR would say SIR. So this is very important. JDM cars have this on the radiator core support. Let's start up the car. So here's the catalog of the Torneo Euro R, and you can see here, nice picture of the red top H22 engine. But what we want to talk about is also that Honda has put some effort into the body tuning. Uh, you can see here that Honda has actually put quite a lot of effort even in tuning the body to the R taste. Over here is the body shell diagram. In the blue is reinforcements done to the base model, especially the all important rear firewall reinforcement, which is the same thing done in cars like the Lancer Evolution to stiffen up that gap between the rear seats and the trunk. Now take a look here at the red which is only for the Euro there's additional plates added for more reinforcements and also thicker front suspension strut tow mounts. It's a different body from the normal standard model. Just very same in the Type R's you can't actually convert a standard model into an R model. So always in a large C-segment saloon car, the best feature is how much boot or trunk space it has. Let's open it up. Now something different about the 90s trunk from the even the later models is how wide the opening is in relation to the position of the rear glass. In fact, it's you can see here, we've got some equipment, two big, Japanese style uh, Zabuton. We use this to sit on floors and tummy mats, but look at that, how deep it is. And there's also a center through opening like that. And you can put skis or maybe long flower pots, whatever you please. But this is one of the best parts of a middle-class saloon. Very obviously suited for, you know, if you're married, if you've got one or two kids and you want to go to Nagano or to uh, the beach or wherever you may use this car 
uh, much more practical than a hatchback or a, or a, or a two-door, yet having that sporty R kind of taste. And JDM cars, of course, have the very interesting rear wiper on the four-door saloon and uh, the hardtop models as well. Now, the Uru R also came with a optional, well, actually, it was standard rear spoiler. This was removed, but you can see reference photos here, uh, how it looks like. I kind of like how it has no spoiler. It looks very sleeper. It, maybe you remove the badges and no one knows what it is, but you know, it's, it's, it's actually a very sporting car. Let's have a look at the rear seats. All right, sitting in the rear seat, obviously a lot of leg room. Actually, this feels pretty much the same as the FD2 Civic Type I, which reviewed in our previous video. Let's have a look. The same Civic Ferio EK of that generation had a wheelbase of 2,200 millimeters. The wheelbase of the CF and CL Accord is 2,665, making it four centimeters longer. And you can really see that in just this much space. Also, the roof line is ample. The rear seats are actually very well supported. Uh, typical, of course, of an Accord. And the materials used inside, uh, typical of 90s Hondas, very high quality feel in the plastics. It's, it's not so hard and tacky. All the materials on the side here, you've got chrome door handles and for the Euro R grade, uh, kind of a mesh net uh, side trim versus the kind of a very felt feel of the SIR, kind of fake carbon fiber, very well done uh, buttons which don't squeak. Five seater car, so you can have either the small passenger in the middle, and you've got two cup holders here. So, usability, uh, even for a sports car, would be in the same class as a Legacy or a Galant of the same generation. Now, the Recaro seats in front also makes it. A little bit thinner. You have no door pockets at the back. What's this? Racing harness. Does someone actually go racing with this? Family saloon? Maybe bring your family and then leave the kids and the, and the wife in the pits while dad goes racing. I don't know. <laughs> Let's have a look at the front. Let's talk a little bit about these Recaro seats which came standard from the factory. It's called the SPJ and it's the exact same model used on the Lancer Evolution 5 and 6 and 6 Tommy Mackinnon and maybe one or two other cars, like the Caldina. But this is a wonderful, and I say wonderful because it's comfortable. Very different from the Type R's SR3 with much harsher side bolsters and oh, much stiffer, right? The first thing you notice is the backrest of this model Recaro. It's much softer, making it very comfortable for long distance rides. Even though the side bolster on here is not as stiff, you can feel and press open. Like in the previous Recaro shop video, we talked about several different models as well. But imagining this coming standard with your Euro R gives it a very sporty feel. The difference of the seating position from the SIR is actually pretty much the same. We happen to have a CF4. SIR, which you can see very briefly in our S2000 video, and just directly coming from that into this, the height is exactly the same. And you can tell that the taste is a bit different from what they intended uh, compared to the Type R models. 90s style interior, very well laid out. The design here, as you can see, it's at an angle, but from my driving position, at least, Maybe some people might say it's a little bit too close. All right, let's say I go one or two steps back like that. All the controls are still within reach for this driving position. Uh, very well thought out. I don't have to reach forward excessively to touch anything. But one interesting thing is this design of the center console. Now, lifting this up, there's a lot of space. We've got our radio, got my Japanese rolled margarine bread. But here's where it gets interesting. These are the cup holders, which you can see, you put one or two here, but if you don't need them, you can slide it forward like that. And you have even more space to put, well, all right, put these things, I suppose, bread, and it still closes. And there's even more space here to put my receipt. There, done. Another interesting thing that I found only for this model, in fact, we've probably never seen this before. Where is the glove box? There's nothing here, but it's actually located here. 
sort of like a reverse airplane overhead compartment. It kind of opens this way. So your items are put deep inside, down like this, rather than sliding it vertically. I wonder what this bit is for. All right, let me try. Maybe it's to strap this for bottles. Oh, I don't know. Okay, I'm not using this properly. You're right, Japonic. It's probably for bottles, but an interesting design nonetheless. Um, I wonder if you can balance your snacks here, like a bag of potato chips, or maybe we can put this here, and the passenger can just. I got it. It's actually a. Table. Yeah, it's actually a. It's actually a table. It's perhaps the idea is actually taken from aircraft. It would have been interesting if they made it flat. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> every panel is a typical '90s Honda. Very high quality in feel, no squeaks even after 20 years, and I'm intentionally pushing on everything right now. I know that some people in the comments might say, oh no, you're too rough with the car and stuff like that, but, but this is a real test of quality. We see in a lot of newer cars how plastics have basically been downgraded and you know, cost down. For the Euro R only, you have this sort of very classy but fake carbon fiber trim is in a different shade from the other models. Now this is the standard aluminium, not titanium. You can see from the, from the lighter silver color. This one's a little bit dirty. It's scuffed up after years of use, but it's aluminium shift knob versus the titanium from the DC2 and the EK9. It's a little bit offset to the left side as well. I wonder why. I think it should be more towards uh, this side. The steering wheel, let's have a look, is exactly the same model as I said previously from uh, as the EK9 and DC2, although it's not red, it's gold. So you can see here very clearly that the Euro R doesn't have red badges on the Honda, not on the front, on the rear. It's not meant to be a Type R. It's a slightly different taste. You've got that R taste, but it's not a full racing kind of feeling. You have the typical 90 style map reading lamps and enough one space to keep one pair of sunglasses, big mirrors, no lights here. Just, just some of these small little things that even in the 90s for Japanese spec cars uh, was pretty much standard. Now in conclusion, is this car worth it for the JDM fans? A lot of you who might not even know about the CL1 Accord Euro R do consider it as an alternative to the very popular Type Rs. Now, if you're a family man or if you're just someone who could only have one car and you needed the best of both, the Euro R is perhaps the best 90s compromise of sportiness with a, a nice civilized feel that you can take long distance driving, but still have that Honda DNA in the chassis and the engine uh, to go driving. And it has that classic 90s kind of feel. They're not too expensive right now as of July 2020. Who knows, it may go up, but it's unlikely that the prices of these Euro R's will reach Type R levels. Now, then, not many of them left in Japan. The Torneo is rarer than the Accord, so you can consider this and if you're looking for something with the 90s quality and good drivability, um, do consider it. Uh, just another thing to know that this test car today doesn't have the standard rather small 16-inch wheels. These are the 17-inch OZs. Um, you can upgrade them to the later CL7s, 17-inch, and even put spoon calipers or Brembo calipers. A lot of things that you can do taking from the Prelude. So you might, it might be a worthwhile consideration uh, as an alternative choice. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed uh, this review. Let us know in the comments if you'd like us to review some other strange cars uh, from Toyota or from Nissan or from Mitsubishi as well, Subaru. And until next time, our next review, thanks for watching. Peace out.